It is March of 2025 and Unify has moved into the 100 gig networking space with their new Enterprise Campus Aggregation Switch, which supports MC lag, switch stacking, hot spot power supplies, and fans, has 3.6 terabits of switching capacity, is running Sonic OS on the back end, and even has some fancy lighting. Now, I did receive these switches several months ago from Unify before their official release, and I've been testing them ever since, and the testing has gone well, so it's time for this review. Even though these were sent to me, all opinions are my own, and Unify has no editorial control control over this video, so let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, the ECS aggregation has 48 25 gig ports and six 100 gig ports. I will show in the video how the MC lag works and how to set up stacking in these. It's actually really, really simple. But it also has the common interface that we see for Unify. So even though I mentioned in the beginning here, it's running Sonic OS, and we'll jump to the command line and show that, you don't have to do anything, and I actually don't believe you can do anything with Sonic OS from the command line that won't get overridden by Unify's interface to set up and manage this. So there's not any command line knowledge needed. It's still in the Unify ecosystem of being really easy to use and really easy to set up with just a few clicks. And we'll show that without having to learn all the command lines to set that up. But coming over back to the switch, the hot swap fan modules are actually really slick easy to do. They got a little thumb screw on them so you can pop them out, slide them back in. The system will let you know if there's a fan problem. And of course, the other fans will ramp up when you remove a fan or a failure to compensate for that. The plenum inside there also makes all the air direction go from front to back in a normal way that a switch would work. The large heat sinks on this means it dissipates the heat, I think, reasonably well because it's actually a rather quiet switch unless the fans ramp up. Granted, I do not have 48 25 gig SFPs plugged in at the same time, which then I imagine the fans would go to a much higher load. Now onto the power supplies. They appear to be the same exact ones that they're using in their enterprise firewalls. So I like that there's a common parts compatibility. So you're not trying to hunt down exactly which power supply for which model. And that makes things much easier, of course. Now, Unify has all the tech specs here about performance and total non-blocking throughput, supported VLANs, etc., layer two features, layer three features. But I want to talk about the chipset in there. It is actually running the Marvel chipset. If you didn't notice that from when I was running some of the commands, that is what runs the main system. But Sonic OS actually runs on another part, which is a daughter board, essentially, that has a processor and, well, separate computer to run Sonic OS. I'm not going to get too deep into Sonic. Plenty you can learn about it because it is open source. It is a really interesting tool for that. And if you want to see the daughter board taken apart, do check out the video I linked down below over at Short Circuit, where they did take it apart more than I'm bothered to do so since they did it. And I don't feel like repeating the same work. So I have the switches adopted and set up in my controller here. And I want to point out that if you're using these individually and not stacking them together, which we'll get to in a moment, they work just like any other Unify switch. And also, in case anyone was wondering here, when you connect them and you set port three, for example, and you can go to manual and you can choose to negotiate automatically 25 or 10. If I set this port to 10, I can still set adjacent ports to 25. There's not any type of port grouping that it forces on you where if one of these has to be 25, then the other adjacent ones will have to be 25, or if they have to be 10, the adjacent ones would have to be 10 as well. So they're not grouped, they're all individually selectable ports. And that goes all the way over here to our 100 gig. And the 100 gig ports, the six of them on this side here, they can be manually set to do 100 or 40. So that's the two options they have here for the QSFP ports. Coming back over to the MC lag, and we'll cancel out of this, and I'll show you how to set up MC lag. But before I do that, let me show you how the switches are connected under the topology. So we have the ECS aggregation being fed by my 
USXG, and it's only a single 10 gig connection. But we want to stack these two switches. And I'm only going to use this in a basic demo, so I only have one system connected to it to give you the concept, but they've made this really simple to do. So we have the ECS aggregation bottom, ECS aggregation top, and we have a 100 gig link between them. Matter of fact, more specifically, I have a pair of 100 gig links. So if we go to the port manager, we have a 100 gig here and a 100 gig here. Now this is required when you do the MC lag, you need a minimum of two connections between the switches to stack and lag them together. So let's go ahead and show you how that process works. First, we're gonna go here and it'll give you a default MC lag group name. If you have many switches and many stacking options they have available here, you could build out different groups, but we just have two switches and we are just gonna have this one particular group. I'm just gonna leave it at the default name, but you can put whatever you want in here for clarity and naming. Then we're going to choose that the top switch be the ECS aggregation top, ECS aggregation bottom. Leave the box checked for stacking. Multi-chassis link. Well, we've got that link right here. We want to choose ports 53 and 54 on the top switch and 53, 54. You could mix and match. Maybe you've got them plugged into a different one and you can choose any of these switch, but you do have a minimum of two ports required for the link aggregation between the chassis. And you can do this on the 25 or on the 100 gig options. And we're gonna go ahead and click save. All right, now that that part's set up, let's configure the target device membership. Target device membership are either, sometimes if you're feeding it from other firewalls and this is part of your core setup, or in the case that I have here on port 48 on each of these switches, I've just got a device connected and it's set up in LACP. It's a hypervisor that's got two network interfaces. The reason for doing this, of course, with the target device having two interfaces is this allows you to survive a switch failure on either side and keep connectivity. You have to add each of these groups. So we can add another grouping for maybe a storage server we have, and we can say maybe that's plugged in on port one on both of these. Then we click save. Or if you have another device plugged in on port 15, 16, 17, 18, like this, you can create the same symmetry and use maybe four ports because you have some really high-end storage server that's got that many connections going to it. Or you could use the still available 100 gig ports because I only use two of them. This is how you build for each of the target devices and allow that redundancy and resiliency between switches. And of course, this also allows you to update a switch, have a switch restart without shutting down the infrastructure. But we'll just leave these ones right here set up and it's going to say not established. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. There is a pause a little bit longer than just changing a setting on a switch port when it does the reconfiguration. That's because it's a lot going on in the back end to do all the steps needed to set this up and configure it but it does so automatically. These will stay green. They're going to go to basically getting ready. And after we wait a few minutes here, they'll be all set. Now that took just a little over a minute to get both of these configured. So now let me go over to the ECS aggregation and it doesn't really matter which one I click on. The port manager will now work for both and because it shows them stacked. And I have right here the device, the target device set up and working. This is automatically set to LACP. That is how this hypervisor system's running. It's got dual NICs. One is, is attached to the top, one's attached to the bottom. And if we go over here to MC lag, first we look and see our multi-chassis link is connected. Then we see our top switch, bottom switch, and port 48 connected. And then I can add more if I want. As I said, it's pretty simple to do, and it will take about a minute to reconfigure those ports. Now, if you're curious, as I was, what happens when you add more target members and it goes through the reconfigure process, is it dropping any of the connections or causing any pausing? And the answer is I lost three packets during that transition. So even though it's taking about a minute to add more devices to the group, it does only lose three packets, even though the switch takes about a minute to reconfigure. Now, there's a lot going on on the back end. Sonic OS is somewhat complicated if you've not used it before. And there are plenty of guides you can find on the steps it takes to set up MC lag. And I think Unify did a great job of making just a few clicks easy to configure this and add more port members. But of course, there's going to be people probably already commenting down below that because it runs Sonic, they should be able to do everything from the command line and people shouldn't have access to this level of power through a simple web UI. I've seen that debate many times. Leave your thoughts on that down below if you think everything should be configured via command line and not have such easy interfaces so anyone can just do a few clicks and get MC lag set up with a few members with it and have that ease of use. I don't know. That's a fun debate and I look forward to reading those comments. If you want to have more in-depth discussion though, head over to forums.learntsystems.com. If you want to see more content from my channel, 
subscribe and like and all that fun stuff and check out my Unify playlist, which you'll find a lot of other Unify videos if you're interested in getting started in this ecosystem. Or head over to lawrencesystems.com where you can join my newsletter or connect with me on whatever socials you'll find me on there. All right, and thanks.